labor and toil to establish all these different rules and laws to try to do away with racism. Right. All those rules and laws we try to establish, not only can they never do away with racism, but they'll create more racism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because racism is the fruit of us trying to be justified through our flesh or knowing ourselves according to our flesh, knowing ourselves by our skin color, knowing ourselves by our sex, all those kinds of things. And the more we implement a thinking that causes us to know ourselves by those things more and more and more, the more division will cause amongst people. Because we'll see each other as different, right? And not only we'll see each other as different, we'll judge each other by our differences. And we'll attribute our pain and suffering to the people we see different than us. We'll scapegoat the other people. Now that creates hatred for those people is what happens. Mm -hmm. and, and typically what society does is we implement rules and regulations that convinces one group of people that another group of people is the source of their suffering. Well, what do you think that puts in, in their hearts towards the other people? Hatred, right? right? More division, more division. Where God come and said, listen, the thing that's causing suffering is that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil has been planted in the earth and people are all the time eating from it. It's not other people causing your suffering. It's this tree causing your suffering, right? And that's why Jesus said, I come to take the ax to the root of the tree. He come to, you know, like at Christmas, you go and cut down a tree out in the woods or whatever and you carry, drag it. Jesus came like a Christmas guy looking for a tree, except he wasn't looking to take this tree to his house. He was looking to cut that thing down and then burn it up, right? And he did. Right. Through the law comes a knowledge of sin. So what happens is we think that if we set these laws up and to to tell people how they should behave toward one another, it'll be good. But the law itself draws lines and distinctions. You are this and you are this. But we gotta get together. But when you draw the distinctions, you immediately bring enmity between people. Yeah, and, and listen, this isn't a vote for a candidate or a ideology in our country when I say this, but I'm just pointing this out. And it, it, it's not to give the guy affirmation to everything he says or does, but this one thing that the guy said in the, in, in the I don't know what they call it, is it the inauguration speech? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he made a comment about how we're all Americans and we all bleed blood. You see, and I don't know if he realizes what that was born from, but it was basically the wisdom that there's no difference between any of us. We're all the same. But that's actually the thing that possesses the power to destroy racism. You see, and if, if we could stop knowing ourselves by the color of our skin or by our sex as far as our value and worth or as far as our life, then that would do a lot to do away with a lot of the suffering in our <coughs> Right? Yes. It's like if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Well, the wisdom of man is if, I, if I've suffered injustice in this world or if injustice is coming against me in this world, I'm going to pick up the sword and I'm going to fight it. Mm -hmm. But when Peter picked up the sword to fight the injustice that was coming against Jesus and he cut off the guy's ear, what did Jesus do? He told him, put the sword on, man. And he healed the guy's ear. And he healed the guy's ear. Right? Is it for me? <laughs> and the way, that, the way that we fight injustice, guys, is in the hearts of people. Jesus said the kingdom of God is found within, not without. We're so busy trying to clean up the fruit on the outside of the tree that we're leaving the root that creates the fruit firmly planted. So I can go out there and pick all the fruit off all I like. I can feel real good. Tomorrow morning, it's all going to be there again. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to wonder what's going on. Yeah. But if we can speak a word to people about how they were crucified with Christ and they no longer see themselves after the flesh, they don't know themselves after the flesh, they'll be set free from that and we'll stop looking at each other after the flesh and we'll start looking at each other after the spirit and then we'll have discern something called discerning of spirits well we'll see there's a spirit in the earth that has brought injustice to all people and not only has it brought injustice to all people it comes to convince the people that other people are responsible for the injustice they've experienced and then it gets fighting going on back and forth but what jesus said is that justice is not found in the world. See, Jesus had something in him. We all agreed Jesus had the most injustice come against him than any human, one single human being ever had. Yep. Yeah. But what, So why is it that Jesus didn't fight for his rights? Why didn't Jesus take up the sword? Why wasn't Jesus out there preaching about what he deserved? You see, Jesus, he didn't do that by his own works, but Jesus had a wisdom that said justice from the injustice of the world can never be found from the world. That which brings you injustice, the world, mm -hmm. can't be that which saves you from the injustice. Mm -hmm. 
Right? Wow. So the, the wicked trick the devil's got going on is that the wisdom of the world is what brings injustice to us. And now he's got us looking to the world to be saved from. And so it, fo it fosters this cycle of nothing but more and more injustice. So Jesus looked and he said, freedom from this injustice that's coming against me isn't found in the world. It's not found from the world, nor can the world even give it to me if it wants to. Freedom from the injustice in the world is found in Abba, in the word of what Abba has spoken about me and my life, in the word of what Abba will do to bring justice to me. Right? That caused him to rest. And he experienced freedom from the great injustice that came against him. How do we know? Because when he was hanging on the cross, absorbing the injustice of the world, he felt rest instead of laboring and toiling. He talked to God instead of enlisting his own ability. Now, if Jesus would have tried to save himself from the injustice that came against him in the world, do you know what that would have looked like? Him coming off the cross, growing about eight feet and smiting all those people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the world's idea of justice. Yes, exactly right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. You see? But Jesus experienced freedom from that. He experienced a peace and a rest in the midst of the injustices of the world coming against him because he knew, I can't find justice in the world. So he didn't look there. Mm -hmm. He said, I can only find justice from God, in God, right? And so then he starts talking with God, Abba. He engages God. He becomes encouraged in the truth. The Spirit comes and ministers to his heart, right? And then he finds justice from the injustice that was happening to him in his heart because he was set free from the effects that that injustice was trying to have upon his life. He was set free from it. We, we only look at the outward effect of injustice or the outward action of injustice. We never consider the effect it has inside of the heart. The most powerful injustice isn't what can happen to you outwardly. It's what it will happen to you inwardly after the outward thing happens to you. Right? And so freedom from injustice comes from your heart being protected from the effects of injustice. Right? And so Jesus, injustice is coming against him. And Jesus was set free <laughs> from the effect that had on his heart. He wasn't filled with angry retribution as he hung on the cross. He wasn't filled with vengeance towards people. He wasn't filled with how he's going to exalt himself. He wasn't filled with laboring and toiling about how he was going to give himself justice. He experienced peace and rest. Listen, if your mind is filled with trying to bring justice, you're not in rest. Yeah, right. You're not filled with peace. Right. You're filled with labors and annoyances. That's what you're filled with. And that's the worst effect that injustice can have on you. Because every human being has something deep in their heart that tells them they're full of value and worth. Every human being has a silent voice that echoes in them that they're the God kind, that they're created for glory, that they're created for life, that their life has value and worth. And so when something in this world comes against that idea, they feel great pain and they're being tempted to prove it or to look to Abba. Right? And yeah. if you take on the idea that you're now going to establish justice by what you bring forth, or that you're going to bring justice, you're filled with laboring and toiling, anger, hatred, envy, backbiting, gossip, all those different kinds of things. That's the worst effect of injustice. Right? That's the worst effect of injustice, is that it will fill your conscience with laboring and toiling to justify yourself. It'll fill your conscience with laboring and toiling to bring about justice instead of resting in the word of what God did to bring justice. God's already brought justice to all of us. The injustice we've all been experiencing is at the hands of the death that entered the world, the sin and the death that came by Adam. And so what did God do? God came and made that thing right. He brought justice. How did he bring justice? He took a human being who was in bondage to the injustice of the world, and he raised that human being up, and he sat that human being at the right hand of God, clothed him in glory and eternal life. He brought justice. And now we can see the justice that God has brought to us. And we can find that justice stripping us in the inner man. And then I no longer care about what another human being can say or do to me because I'm not looking for justice there. Should another person think that white people are the cause of the evil in the earth and they come against me? 
I don't care. Because God has brought me justice. I don't need it from them. Should, uh, I mean, it's like the worst thing in the world right now in the political correctness environment to be a, a, a white male. Right. <laughs> I mean, I guess I have, I mean, I guess I have some Indian too, but it don't look like it, so yeah. that won't count. But like, so should the world adopt this persuasion that it's white men that have ruined everything? Listen, man, I'm not going to be fighting to prove that white men are good. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what they say. Right. We're never going to get the world to agree yeah. with what God has said about us. We're never going to find justice from the world. That's the trick of the Adam man. Right. The Adam man is always laboring and toiling to establish justice for themselves. Right? The Christ man sees that God will bring justice and he rests in the justice God has brought through his son, right? So when the Bible talks about do justice in the earth, you know what you do justice in the earth is by preaching what God has done in Christ. <laughs> you preach Christ and him crucified. You're bringing justice to the pain and suffering that's come against people's hearts. That's the greatest injustice that can happen to a being that was created only for love and peace and joy and kindness and patience and meekness and faithfulness towards God. The greatest injustice that can happen to that human being is their hearts filled with anger and envy and backbiting and gossiping and striving and laboring and toiling. So if I want to bring justice to them, I want to set their heart free (coughs) from that laboring and toiling. How am I going to do that? I'm going to preach Christ and Him crucified in the earth, and that will bring justice. Right. 